guess we can just start at the top. Uh, so first one in process is the secure smart contract library. Okay, so the action on this was to set up a meeting. I think this came through the uh, Telegram channel uh, with the vendor doing the proposal because we wanted to understand this. Now, the, the question I wanted to bring to the group is, do we want a meeting with all the chains represented or is this the kind of meeting where we want somebody to just negotiate prices? Like, are we asking about what it is they're gonna do or is it just about how much it costs? which is a different type of meeting. This is the one that has so many involved, right? Yes. Yeah. There's yeah. three, uh, three vendors. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if we want to, it'd be much more efficient to go through it on a master contractor sort of uh, approach. Um, uh, I'll be honest. I, I dug into that uh two weeks ago and i was i was like okay this is not going to be quick or easy there's there's uh, a lot of complexity here so um we have to find out if there is a master contractor there who wants to who wants to you know take the take the uh, responsibility of sharing it with everyone below them like it's not necessarily that arrangement as i understand it but we can make that request, right? We've we've done so in the ENF historically, where we just told multiple vendors that were bidding on one thing, you know, separately. You guys figure out on your end, pick one entity. We're only dealing with one. You guys can figure out how you want to do that. We don't care, but we're only doing with one. I, I don't see why we wouldn't or can't do that with these guys. Okay, it's good to be the king, as they say. Um, and then it's it's on them how they want to split it up afterwards. It's on them to figure out the, the the finances and kind of the accounting and such. It's just we deal with one entity. I'm I'm completely cool with um, with taking that route and making that I guess that that demand essentially. We we just don't allow anything else. Uh, okay. Um, did we? Did you get the? Um, so I had I had uh, uh, volunteered. To be involved with this as long as someone from uh enf was going to be also did you uh have a chance to look into that eve if I mean, you're the more obvious person there we've done this with other groups um, uh, i did look into it but uh if i'm not mistaken eos nation is part of that and because i was too close to eos nation i think it's actually better to avoid the the potential conflict to send somebody else uh, on my behalf uh to negotiate i, I would definitely negotiate um based on what on what they said make sure that we refine the proposal that we're good with what will be delivered but i definitely go back and negotiate on the price for sure um and i think it would be best if it's not me um because of that negotiation connection okay uh otherwise i, think... I will i will always volunteer to go and negotiate i yeah. love doing it <laughs> and um, i think it's a useful uh function to provide to the to the group Either yeah. Jeff or I are uh, available from ENF if you want an ENF person there. You just let us know. What either one of us are happy to do that. Well, Ted is a good negotiator. He's going to give us a good deal, guys. I would send him Ted. Yeah. Great. No yeah. objections yeah. whatsoever. Uh, who are the other groups that are pitching together? I think there's three or four, right? EOS Nation. Uh, DeFi box uh, origins adding some support and the organization formerly known as Pizza, which is now Offline Studio. Gotcha. So it's those, okay. those four. Gotcha. So uh, Guillaume or, or is Guillaume or Darren on the line right now? I just can't see. Yep, I'm here. Uh, so then maybe Guillaume would also excuse himself from that process. So maybe if they appoint one Correct. of the representatives it would not be origin and then origin would be a subcontractor of kind of like what we did with um yield plus or something like that yeah exactly i already uh already said i would not be voting on that particular one and of course i won't be negotiating uh, either so then ted are you comfortable with with douglas to absolutely reach out to these guys and whoever they decide to appoint to lead this would, uh, would it be okay for Jeff to do the initial reach out to ask who their master uh, Oh, sure. Was? 
And then from there, you know, we can start scheduling it. I'm, I'm just like not even sure where to, which end of this B stick start grabbing at. Yeah, yeah. Was there still any questions though in terms of what is being pitched? Because uh, I, I thought I'd heard that maybe from Lucas, um, the question of whether or not what is being proposed is even what we're looking for. Or is, or is that good, we're good, what is being proposed is, so we are effectively now can enter the negotiation of more price and, and time, less of the, the content, or is that still on the table, the content portion? Jeff, on the RFP response, did they delineate who was doing which pieces? They did. Okay. They did. Then it should be clear. And, it is. and is everybody, at least in the coalition, comfortable with what is being proposed so that we can send Jeff and Ted and Douglas in to just do the negotiation aspect? I'm fine with it. Then I, yeah, then I would say we're, we're good to go with that. I think the next steps would be to try and um, come on an agreement with that group of how much and how long. All right. Let's try it, guys. Let's try to set up a, a time, uh, you know, through the Telegram channel. Uh, an unfortunate bit of timing is from tomorrow I'm traveling. I'm doing a couple of trips. Um, it'll be take up a week. So that will be harder for me to, to schedule during that next upcoming week. We'll see what we can do. Okay. Well, we'll definitely get the conversation started with them about structuring a master contractor. Um, we would need that done first anyway. So yeah. The other thing I'll, I'll let you know, Douglas, uh, we have uh, somebody on my team named Amy. You'll see her name pop up. I'm going to work closely with her, but I'm introducing her into kind of this coordination uh, just behind the scenes, just to let you know. I'm still 100% responsible for this, but when you see her name pop up, she's working for me. All right. Great. All right. Together. And I guess just for, for others, so because she her name might pop up uh, more. So Amy recently started with us and she's a contract specialist. So she'll be coming and providing support for contracts with the app, but obviously that'll pour into um, to Antelope being able to, to beef up that, um, that particular skill set for the group as well. Fantastic. Nice to have that additional resource. Thanks for lending it to the group. All right. Uh, next one, IBC governance. Um, I believe, Guillaume, you had the meeting uh, and you began the initial yeah. list of questions. So where are we? On? We had um, we had two meetings uh, so far and I, uh, I updated Eve uh, yesterday or two days ago, um, bringing him up to speed. And I'm sure Ted has been doing the same. The, essentially, there's two main agenda items that we're going to need to tackle, um, one of which is essentially the, um, the naming convention and uh, structure of the contracts that we will be setting up on our respective chains. So that's uh, item number one. And I Number two is going to be um, is going to be um, with regards to um, the the I guess like the roles and responsibilities of each uh, intervention in case of issues, whether it's uh, things of the sort, as well as uh, potentially more uh, contentious point. Uh, am I losing connection or is everybody else? Uh, you need a action that chain that would affect other chains. <laughs> you only cut Problem. out them for a few seconds for maybe 10 okay. seconds. Okay, sorry. So yeah, I was, um, uh, uh, can you guys hear me okay now? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, so essentially like the, the second point was uh, with regards to uh, protocols that need to be established in case of uh, any manual intervention is needed, uh, like following a hack, following bugs, or following uh, the more contentious um, scenario would be some unilateral action by a chain that would not be sanctioned by the others. For example, if uh, the BPs of one chain decided for any reason to uh, freeze um, uh, the wrap lock or the wrap token contract on their end for 
any reason whatsoever, whether it's in response to a hack or it's in response to law enforcement requests or so on and so forth. So uh, we need to establish some sort of degree of uh, understanding between each other about uh, how these should be treated, how these situations should be treated, and what would be the proper proper protocols to um, to follow uh, in case such a thing happened. So uh, these are not easy questions, but it needs to be done. On that, Guillaume, you, you and I didn't um, didn't catch up on that part. So on EOS, we have uh, Recover Plus, the initiative that deals with this in-house, like what happens if that happens in um, EOS. Uh, I'm sure that we that the group, if they wanted to, could repurpose what's been done on Recover Plus as a general framework for discussion for what could potentially happen in the coalition if it chose to go that route, if it chose to go for a recovery method or a block method or whatever. If we choose not to do that, then the obvious answer is simple. We just don't do anything. Hack happens, we let it happen. Whatever it may be, uh, I'm just offering that, that um, you know, we don't need to start from scratch if we choose to go the route of are we even okay with somehow intervening? I, I, uh, I feel strongly that we need to have some kind of documented procedure um, ahead of time. Otherwise, it's it'll add to any chaos that may happen uh, should this occur. So, and I think that that was the, I think everyone on the group um, uh, who, who was discussing this uh, saw the saw the value of that. So, in our two meetings, we ba basically identified these two issues, and the the remaining thing we need to talk about is is what exactly would those processes be. So yeah, we should uh, looking at their Recover Plus uh, paper would be a good place to to um, you know that's certainly worth looking at. That uh, the issues are not exactly the same, but uh, they may be um, they may be. Uh, I, I think enough. it will provide it will provide uh, definitely some answers or some I guess guidance for some of the questions. Probably not all of it because again, uh, no, the, the, the 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 challenge that I see is uh, uh, let's say for example um, there's a hack happening on one of the chains and there is a um, like intervention that uh, is performed by the BPs for example to freeze that account, but some of the funds have already been transferred to another chain. Now, how does that other chain would, would react and how would that uh, potentially transpire? So there, these are questions that like yeah, need to be uh, discussed. And uh, I think I think ultimately, it's uh, kind of like what Douglas was saying, We um, the, the more we um, discuss and formalize ahead of time, the better uh, it will be if such a thing happened. Uh, at least people will know what to expect, which is really what like this is the only thing that we can we can, <laughs> we can really have uh, realistically control uh, over at this point is what is uh, what are going to be the expectations in case of an issue, which I think is is totally doable. Right. There was one other uh, Guillaume. There's one other thing that we uh, topic that we covered that we haven't mentioned here, which is that um, what happens uh, as the group wants to add more new token, more new chains. Uh, if, for example, you right. know, ABC chain wanted to come in and and some wanted it and some didn't want it, you know, how would how would that be done? Um, and that's something we will need to. That's a separate issue, but also something that needs that which falls under uh, IBC governance. So I would suggest that both for that and other things, maybe Guillaume circulate your list of questions that you've already started. And then as we, you know, individual people review, uh, submit questions to that list, because I believe the questions really are gonna help define the end solution you're targeting. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 no problem, sounds good. So for the idea of um, looking at Recover Plus for EOS as a starting point, uh, so how should we do that? Uh, Guillaume, you need a presentation on that. Do uh, I need to set that up? for you and who else wants to be involved with that kind of uh, meeting? Uh, I'm already somewhat familiar with uh, Recover Plus. So I, yeah. like, um, I'm, uh, um, I mean, of course, of course, if, if, if someone volunteers to, uh, to like um, participate in the discussion, it would also be an expert on Recover Plus and can 
uh, talk about the uh, various processes that are already in place. I think it's it's valuable to have them part of that um, discussion. But um, yeah, I think I think as far as I'm concerned, I'm I'm okay with it. I don't need okay. more uh, clarification there. Okay, I could also make sure the, the isn't there a blue paper on this, uh, Eve, that we could potentially share. Well, it, there's a blue paper, uh, it's, and it's public. So public, it's, so, and that's what I'm saying. So not like it's you don't have to worry about is it okay? It's public. Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll get the blue paper into the channel just just for reference. People uh, haven't gone and looked that up. Yeah, and just to characterize how the work is happening in this work group, um, nothing has been contentious. Uh, there's there's it, this is simply there's a lot to talk through. Uh, I think we all are able to to come to reasonable um, reasonable uh, decisions about how to continue advancing forward, and I think that the group will uh, will understand what we what we ultimately put together. But it's just there's just a lot to there's just a lot of like educations and things like that to to discuss and and talk through and figure out the you know figure out the best approach to. Um, to dealing with so it's going well it's just it's just you know it's always hard to add uh, you know hour-long meetings to, to everyone's already busy schedules all right next item the developer onboarding uh and development workshops uh ted do you want to provide an update on that on the guys? i was looking up that blue paper on the oh yeah okay um they have not come back with their next level of proposal yet. Um, there, we did have an update meeting and we kind of went into more detail, uh, but there we're waiting on them now to come back with, you know, how they will scale it to external parties. Um, you know, what the pricing would be. Um, and they're looking to try to get that on my calendar next week, either Wednesday in the morning or evening or I mean afternoon or Thursday afternoon after this call um, uh, th so that we can close the loop on that. And I, I have been pressing them, you know, they're, they're still more interested in the content and the mechanisms. And I'm trying to say, hey, get the program started and how will you work with external parties and what would you charge? And they're less interested in that. And so we're kind of, you know, we're, we're not on the same page, unfortunately. Um, but I, I have been pressing them and making it clear they are very well open to uh, bringing coalition members in because my first request to them is they had to include um, ENF, you know, junior employees that were hiring. And then immediately I went after talking with Guillaume, I added they have to add coalition members as well. And they've agreed to that. They're just not coming back with how will they scale it to an external party and how will they charge for it? And like who will pay for the creation of the content, like even how that works. Um, so we're, I'm, I'm a bit frustrated with them and I have been pushing them hard. Separately, I also uh, reached out to uh, Kevin Efner and uh, I do have a call scheduled tomorrow with uh, Dan Fedge. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, pronounced yeah. right. Yeah, um, sounds good. Yeah, so uh, so uh, we will go over uh, essentially like uh, a few of these uh, items. Not, not exactly like the. I mean, it's going to be part of it. Like, see if they're if I can if I can also uh, push them a little bit in that direction. Thank you. Uh, but also in general, uh, in general, like trying to um, to get some uh, some custom training and uh, consulting for, from them to assist. So uh, I'll definitely keep the the group. What's frustrating is if you look at them, they will tell you they started as a training company. And so, you know, right. I started saying to them, gosh, this is your DNA. Do you have like LMSs, you know, learning management systems and stuff? And they're like, wow, you're like, you're at run and we're at crawl, you know, like maybe we can meet at walk. But I'm like, well, what do you mean? You're, you started out as kind of a training company. This should be returning to your roots you've got all the knowledge, you've got all the right people, we'll help you with some of our experts, but we got to package it and then we have to be able to deploy it in a scalable way so that, you know, to these third parties and you got to have, you know, some type of pricing mechanism. I, I love they'd be altruistic, but 
chances are they're going to want to recover some of their costs. And, and uh, so your help will be very, it'll be very helpful. Thank you, Guillaume. Yeah, no problem. So I'll, I'll keep the group uh, uh, informed of uh, what comes out of it. So our call is scheduled tomorrow. Excellent. All right, faster finality, IBC. Uh, okay, so on the IBC front, we did have an update uh, because of the, the Telos um, testnet upgraded, I think, yesterday to uh, deactivated the um, uh, action return value uh, feature. So uh, we didn't, we, we didn't like, tell any one of you guys about that uh, necessarily, but essentially like if, if uh, that feature gets activated or any other feature, as a matter of fact, that changes the way that uh, hashes are calculated, uh, it would be good if you just gave us a heads up just so that we can um, essentially like, uh, uh, like apply changes as required. So uh, no, no big deal. It's uh, already taken care of, but it's just, um, uh, especially once we're live and once we have uh, this uh, um, deployed to the main nets, it will cause interruption of service if we don't uh, schedule these uh, in advance and if we're not made aware of. So, so essentially, like yeah, like if uh, if if any uh, feature is activated that changes the way that uh, uh, hashes are computed by by the chain, just just give us a heads up so that we can um, we can uh, prepare and uh, just make sure we don't we don't have any interruption of service. Um, with regards to IBC, uh, there's not much uh, additional update. Uh, Arag is still um, hoping to be able to uh, complete the review this week. I uh, couldn't do it last week, so hopefully this week. But it's already Thursday, so <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, he, 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 that's definitely on his radar. He's definitely aware. And uh, hopefully it won't take much longer. Uh, we did reserve the um, the the... The auditing firm, so they are uh, also like uh, aiming for end of month um, uh, to be able to do the, the the audit of the contracts. And uh, I, I did provide an update, a more detailed update to uh, Adam. So uh, if uh, if you guys are uh, interested in the details, you can always have Adam uh, share his um, uh, the report that I uh, provided to him. Um, on the fast finality or instant finality side of things, uh, things are going very well. We got the core logic uh, for aggregate signatures completed. Um, so essentially like that, that includes uh, the host functions, that includes the um, protocol feature activation, that includes uh, the uh, CDT bindings. So now at this stage, we're able to um, essentially write smart contracts that have uh, BLS signature verifications uh, in there and to verify these signatures uh, uh, like within both the Node.js and the CDP context. So uh, I think we're we're ahead of schedule there as well. Uh, after discussion with Eric, we decided to expand the scope a little bit further because um, for uh, for instant finality, we, we need only uh, a few, like a, a subset of the functionality of BLS signatures, but there's also an opportunity to um, essentially widen the interface a little bit more and include in there some uh, primitives that might be useful for uh, more advanced cryptography operations, including um, essentially like a, a verification of ZK snarks and um, other uh, really cool things. Uh, some of which I don't think are, are, are even like uh, necessarily like fully formalized uh there's there's quite a bit of uh of, of cool stuff that will be possible if we include these so i uh, decided to accept that feature request because since we're uh, already ahead of schedule i'm uh, totally okay with uh, with uh adding that so uh it might it might kind of just put us back on schedule instead of uh being ahead but i think at this point i'm 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 okay with this, and I think that it's definitely worth it. So, um, so yeah, so things are progressing uh, very well on that front. Uh, as I explained to Adam, we will reach a point probably towards the, I'd say, like mid-November to late November, where uh, if we don't have, um, uh, you know, like uh, 
I guess like uh, access to ENF engineering progress will slow down because at that point, uh, at that point, essentially, like we need to have a bunch of things reviewed and a bunch of things uh, essentially like verified, and uh, we need to have constant discussions with uh, ENF engineering to make sure that we uh, proceed in a way that's consistent with the rest of the, um, I guess, like roadmap and um, uh, current, uh, I guess, like philosophical decisions so um so yeah so we will need at some point to have uh to, to work uh, more closely with them and if they are still busy with um with uh, evm stuff or other things it will uh definitely start impacting our uh planned schedule but uh again um uh, I, I discussed all of this with adam so in, in theory you guys uh, should have received an update on the nf side so uh um, it's it's really a question of prioritization and um, uh, like mm, <laughs> resource management. Uh, we're okay on our end if it takes a bit longer. Uh, it's not, not a big deal on our end. So that's pretty much it for my update. Yep. And I put on the screen, I, I can do this next time as well, but here's the status reports that you were referring to. There's the IBC one. Um, and yeah. then it's the finality. So, you know, obviously in both of these are really close to the beginning. And I like how you and uh, Adam work to show that they're intertwined with the resourcing down at the bottom. So, yeah. all right, good. Yep. Oops. One, one question just to confirm, is that just any feature activation you need to be uh, given a heads up about or just a simple one? Uh, it's uh, any feature activation changes how um, essentially like uh, hashes are calculated or Merkle, pro uh, Merkle roots are derived. Uh, sometimes it's not it's not necessarily like obvious, um, but one 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 that does uh, change uh, this is the action return value uh, feature. So that's one that uh, was just activated um, uh, yesterday, I believe, on the Telos testnet. So I'm not sure if, uh, uh, if 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 that was uh, if you are part of the of the group that was yeah, uh, no, I, I that. did it. Okay, I did okay. it. We, we did it. We did do it yesterday. Yeah, no, and like I said, it's not, not a not a big deal uh, because of course we've already uh, written the code to handle it. It's just that um, if if we're not uh, basically like told ahead of time, there will be a there will be interruption of service until until. We, we we noticed that it happened. <laughs> and uh, uh, in this case, since we have uh, already a solution deployed to all the test nets, essentially for uh, about like 15 hours, uh, Telos was um, like proofs were not working because of that. But now it's been it's been resolved. Uh, just just um, just keep that in mind whenever uh, you upgrade your main net. And uh, if, if uh, Wax, uh, for instance, decides to uh, also activate this on their test net, uh, just let us know so we can um, we can uh, like uh, prepare. Well, I think we'll be doing it at the end, of, towards the end of the month, so probably before okay. you're on main net. Um, but okay. it's good to note for future activations because uh, we can all look forward to more features. Uh, being and there, there will be. Hopefully. There will be also like other uh, protocol features that will uh, also uh, impact the how ashes are calculated. For example, whenever we um, we release um, uh, we activate these aggregate signatures, that will also uh, um, create a, uh, a a difference in in the hashing function. So uh, that's another example. And there might be others as well. Like uh, uh, pretty much anytime anytime something. Uh, changes in uh, either the, the the block headers or the action traces or um, things of the sort, like it will trigger um, a change in the hashing function. So just uh, just uh, like um, let us know when we will we will plan ahead. Uh, but the outcome of that will be a suspension of service, right? Not a loss of any previous. Uh, transactions or anything, no. is that correct? No, and and and, it, and it's uh yeah it, right. And and in in fact, if we if we're told ahead of time, there won't be any interruption service because we already have the code to handle uh, the situation. It's just that it needs to be activated. And uh, uh, yeah, like if we if 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 we're told ahead of time that okay, like we can activate it around that time, then we will be also like monitoring it. And as soon as the feature is activated, we will also activate it on the smart contract side. 
and uh, then, then uh, problem solved. There's no interruption of service whatsoever. All right. Moving on, uh, the Create Scalability Blue Paper. Um, again, we were, uh, we're, we're finishing the final touches for the three languages. Uh, I did not get confirmation from Zach on that. When we were talking, he obviously was overseas. Um, I will simply ask him, and then I think, as we discussed last time, this one is just about done. So any comments on that? All right, great. Uh, while it's SDK, uh, so here is the uh, status. Aaron, are you on? Can't see yep. the full. Okay, perfect. I sure. Cool. I pulled up your status report on the screen as well. If you want to talk to it, just at a high level. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've been filling these out weekly, and we are currently in the first milestone page, which is all about architecture. Um, we've been spending a couple of weekly meetings internally uh, to come up with a document that we will then be presenting uh, next week, early next week. Uh, the deadline, we just like we projected dates, not based on the day of the week. And it turns out this one happens over the weekend. So I don't think we'd get much traction anyways. So we were just like, we're going to bump that to early next week. Um, but we have progress on that and we're just trying to figure out the best way to uh, illustrate what this is. And then we plan on starting uh, weekly meetings like IBC and uh, Instant Finality have been having. They may not occur every week, but we're going to have it on the calendar for every week. So that way it is like this blocked off time that we can utilize. Um, we're kind of taking inspiration from what you guys are doing in that other project. Um, and then we need these champions to be the ones that are going to be a part of that along with anybody else that's interested from this. Um, and we can open it up to, I don't know, whoever else is gonna be involved in this as time moves on. Um, but that's at a very high level where we're at on that first milestone. We've started on a number of other milestones um, because like the, uh, the website or the product branding um, those aren't due for a while, but they've already started. Uh, we may be pitching names here soon. Uh, I don't necessarily know if how we want to tackle that. Like if we want an approval, maybe what we want is not an utter rejection of the direction we're going. Um, but we have some pretty solid concepts on that side in terms of, like I said, the branding package itself. Um, and then we're going to want some technical conversations around the architecture itself to make sure that we're covering all aspects of everything. Um, we're one of the angles, just as an example, is that um, we're already considering the IBC flow as we know it and how they would fit within this new paradigm of SDKs. Um, and that will be included in the architecture in as kind of like an example. But there are going to be other types of transaction flows and things that the SDKs are going to need to be able to do that we may be unaware of. So hopefully by showing you a few, the various chains, and then we can disseminate that information to the developers on various chains and get involvement so that way other people can say, oh, I do this odd flow when I am doing transactions, and we need to make sure that's accommodated for in the architecture. So that's where we're at in terms of what these reports represent and uh, look forward to having some more recurring meetings with more regular updates on this stuff. So a couple, couple things to unpack there. So first of all, with the architecture uh, milestone coming up, uh, I believe I understood you to say you will have documentation that you would be able to disseminate. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. So I know we have um, we have the idea of champions, and that those are the people you know to officially sign off on the milestone. But the nature of this particular milestone, I believe you're suggesting having an opportunity for almost like open comment uh, beyond just the champions, but rather a larger development community could provide value. Is that am I restating that correctly? Yes, and I guess to kind of put some perspective on the bigger picture is we're going to propose this kind of architecture 
And then our next milestones are not impacted by the architecture, so we can start working on those while we collect feedback through like the open period like we're talking about. And then we can make adjustments to the architecture if needed during that time before we fully commit to like building the foundation with that architecture. Okay, that, so that's perfect. What I would suggest then is, um, so offline working with Adam, you could come up with that open comment period. Um, and then of course, separately from that, we'll, we'll deal with the milestones because I know there's, there's two concepts in there. But as part of that, we'll communicate that schedule back to the chains. And we need to make sure if we're going to allow commentary to come back, we give the communities enough time to disseminate, have people review, ask questions. Um, and so maybe we put a plan together like that. And then at next, uh, next Thursday, uh, we could present that back to say, okay, by this time the architecture is ready. We've posted the documentation. Uh, you know, your communities have X number of days to comment and here's how they comment. So not just read it and, you know, we need to provide some sort of guidance of where those comments flow. Does that yeah. sound good to everybody? Yes. All right. Yep, and sounds good. I guess a comment on the architecture as well. We're intending for this to kind of be living because even within this open comment period, there's, we're not going to catch it all. So this will be an iterative process. Um, this isn't going to be like a final lockdown at the end of this period. It's just this beginning period is the best time to provide feedback, but it'll still be fine to provide feedback. Like let's say even early next year, we should be able to shift and accommodate other use cases for the SDKs. Um, it's just the earlier, the better. So I'll stop ranting. Yep. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's a very good point. All right. Listen on what is next week? Um, and I think I think uh, we have here the champions would be uh, Eve, myself, and Jesse. Um, so I guess it would probably uh, be a good idea to kind of start looking for a uh, weekly time slot that we can all uh, reserve and allocate for this. Yep. And internally to the ENF, there's two people that I'd like to have there as, as kind of like my support that'll likely be involved or that I can that I can see that would be involved in this specifically because it's their alley. Um, so I'm, I'm mentioning that in case on your side, Guillaume, or on your side, Jesse, you also have I do have one, one as well that you would rely on. Um, that way, it's, I, I basically it, it shouldn't be limited to just those people. I'm, it's it's outside of my sphere of knowledge for certain things anyway. So I'd be relying on people anyways. But I would be the the you know the official champion. Good. We can coordinate that in the SDK Telegram channel that we haven't really posted much to yet. Awesome. Perfect. Love it when a plan comes together. All right, this should be a quick one. Just wanted to remind uh, the ENF, uh, Devrel said that they still needed a couple of weeks before they could get this on their plate. Um, so there's no additional comments from that point of view. Anything else people wanna add on, on this one, the work group? All right. All right, now we'll get to some cool stuff. Uh, reprioritization of top development items for the coalition. So here's the list. There's a couple things that I would uh, like to point out. You guys saw in the chat that in several instances, people were saying, well, here's a couple that are grouped together. And from one point of view, the separation was fairly arbitrary. You know, It's just how it got uh, created in the um, blue paper. So if you guys all choose to join these together and treat them as one, that's fine. Um, I would like to point out, and this is just kind of me putting my project manager hat on, that generally speaking, it is much better to not have a big project with a lot of features, but rather have separate projects with separate deliverables, because then you can start getting the value and benefits from the first project in a shorter period of time. And then the next one, as opposed to, you know, something that's larger and intertwined. 
Um, and also smaller projects, generally speaking, have less opportunity for error, uh, you know, problems, that kind of stuff. Doesn't mean there's there aren't reasons to have big projects. I think instant finality is a good example of one. You can't partially, you know, get there with any meaningful internal milestones. But in some cases, if we can break this up and like and the RAM discussion, for example, it sounds to me like there's several things that could be done separately to improve RAM. So just throwing that out. Um, I don't know how you guys want to take that. If you're fine that everybody didn't exactly stay at five, but kind of group stuff together. I, I don't have a horse in that race. Uh, I'm just throwing that out to you guys because these were the you know rules you guys wanted to use as guidelines. Let me let me make a comment on the RAM. So I see the um, addressing Antelope RAM architecture as big as IBC or faster finality. This is this is a this is a big undertaking. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know the ad hoc seven and ad hoc eight are really means to solve some of the problems. The, the, you know this is more of a brainstorming of how to fix it, and they're really part of that. So cheaper storage really addresses. You know right now everything has to be in 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 RAM. So this is more of like well. Uh, how, you know, how, how can we leverage um, um, cheaper storage like this, right? So, so, so and reusing old accounts also is a means to kind of address the, the RAM problem. So, so, you know, maybe even, we could even probably remove ad hoc seven and eight because they may be clouding the, the, uh, the, the, the bigger goal, which is, uh, we need to redesign how um, uh, you know the, the the antelope RAM architecture and how and how it really works with with the concept of having accounts. Um, if we want to allow um, uh, growth, right? If if we want to if we want antelope to support you know billion accounts, um, then then you know this has to be seriously um, uh, thought through. Uh, more on like a principal core architecture level. Uh, and then ad hoc seven, ad hoc, th th those are just kind of, you know, temporary means to an end. Um, and, and we could probably get rid of those altogether. Uh, unsellable RAM is part of that. But, uh, you know, um, the, the RAM limitation fixes, it, it needs to be more like a, you know, um, overall RAM architecture overhaul. If, if you're looking at a how to how to fix the account limitation problem for antelope change, that actually might not be, it seems like it's solely RAM, but that that actually might be better served as its own uh, as its own topic, actually, right? Because there are other approaches that that you know, like light accounts and things like that that don't use RAM. Uh, to the same extent, and you know, perhaps, perhaps if, if we should we should tease out what how much of that of RAM is is about account creation and management and management, and how much is it about uh, you know app uh, DAP usage and whatnot. Um, yeah, there's also uh, also something else. Um, I think I, th I think I think for for this uh, reprioritization, uh, I think we should. Um, Maybe have a bit of discussion before we uh, we want to cast like hard votes and, and alter a course because some of that some of that will be quite uh, technical, especially when it comes to uh, questions like RAM, for instance. Uh, I believe that there is also uh, another opportunity, which is to um, uh, uh, rework how scopes are currently uh, defined, uh, because the way the way it is right now, essentially, like um, scopes are kind of you know, like um, they're not indexed in uh, by default, and they create their own internal um, kind of data structures that um, like typically take quite a bit of space. I think I believe there's an, an extra overhead of 200 bytes per uh, scope created. So um, most people actually, and most most contracts are using scopes extensively, and that's that's definitely um, not optimal. And uh, we cannot. Uh, 
currently we cannot iterate over scopes either within the context of a smart contract. So if we were to, uh, that might be a reasonably low hanging fruit to uh, work on to, um, to potentially uh, alleviate some of the issues and um, it, it might it might warrant its own kind of, I guess, like a, a executive summary and um, a bit more technical discussion around that because I think I think it would be a good one to um, uh, look at. Sure. All right, well, so then let's think about this in terms of next steps because we got 10 minutes left on today's meeting, which is certainly not enough time to start getting into that level of discussion. Um, I can see, first of all, two options. One, we can prioritize this for next week, or if we want to move on this faster, we can set up another meeting explicitly dedicated to talking through these items. It's, it's really your preference. That would be my preference. I think we should set up a, a call prior to next Thursday, if possible. We don't need everybody there, but at least one representative per chain that can speak to these items. Prior to that call, I think we should be weighing, so we should al be allocating um, uh, our, 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 our points or whatever to each so that we get into the call with an understanding of where people's priorities lie in terms of actual weight. And then the meeting could uh, be an opportunity for then people to go back before next Thursday meeting and readjust their pointing system based on uh, what happened during that meeting. And then I would ask that if we do do the pointing system that we do so um, blindly so that we don't see what other people are voting on and how much weight they're giving to each item so that we can really have kind of a neutral here are our priorities and then we have that discussion and then we see how that would change so that by next Thursday, we have kind of like the final weight of what the priorities are based on uh, our own priorities and then the updated priorities based on the discussion that we'll, we'll have you know, earlier than Thursday. I like that, Yves. All right. And then I that way we keep the pressure the on. Should I just reach out to the four chain heads? And then you guys can individually tell me who to invite into this meeting. That works for me. Yeah, that works for me too. Um, I, I do think that we should keep the pressure on this because um, it's quite important. And then they'll start setting as well from a financial point of view, how much money we start need to putting aside. And because there's a lot of administrative work afterwards to do, right? This is only the beginning. Yep, Even the RFP is. side of things, and like, there's a lot of work after this. Okay. Yeah. We'll get in this touch with everybody. All right. We have seven minutes left. Adding new change to the coalition. Again, we'll start this conversation and we can determine if we need to uh, have an additional meeting or if we'll just, this will carry over to next week if we don't finish today. So, who'd like to kick off this topic? I can, I can speak a little bit to this. So we've been getting um, chains reaching out uh, and, it, and it's happened before as well in the last, I guess, six months. And we, as a coalition, I think we agreed that we weren't opening the door at that time. We were getting our foundation solid as a, as a group of four, um, but we're getting more and more inquiries as Antelope is making splashes uh, externally now. People, other Yasayo chains, or I guess other Antelope chains, um, that we didn't even know exist, uh, that have user bases, that have funding, that have their own GitHub repos, that actually you know, have traction, are reaching out. So that's some of them. And others that um, uh, previously were interested, but decided to, you know, it wasn't right for them at that time. Some of them are still knocking on the door. I think it would be worthwhile to re-engage in those discussions. Um, but what we would need to do, in my opinion, as a group here, is figure out what does that even look like? Because um, there's a few components to do is, one I think is the vetting of, uh, do we even want to allow uh, that chain, for example, or that project or whatever it may be to join? Like, do they have the status that we recognize as high enough to, to put at that level, let's say? So we need to create kind of a framework around that or, or something around that document that. We also need to figure out, which we haven't talked in a while, how does that impact finances? Do we have, for example, a, an onboarding cost? Just making up this number, but let's say you wanted to join the coalition, 
it's a million dollars. You have to give a million dollars in the pot and that's your buy-in fee, let's say, and I'm just making this up. And then how does it impact the distribution of um, quarterly contributions? Because we will be going through another quarterly contribution, I guess, at the end of the year and or early next year. So it would be a good time to readjust that. Um, how does it also impact governance? Right now, we currently have the 30, 30, 20, 20. Does it impact that? Do we allow, do we allocate a certain percentage um, or do we, do we re-equilibrate everything? So I think those three areas, the, how do we even say yes or no? Like, is there a threshold for yes, you fit the bill or no, you don't? Uh, two, is there a buy-in fee? And three, what is the ongoing distribution slash governance rights as well for them? I think there needs to be a, a, a subgroup set up that would be uh, responsible for at least coming back to the group with a proposal. But I do believe it's time to do so for multiple reasons. One, there's a lot of inquiry. There's a lot of uh, attention. And I think we should foster that. That can open doors to more developers. But also from a financial point of view, um, we're tackling on more and more items. Actually having more participants from a financial point of view could come and help us. Uh, because the, the costs are quite high and being able to um, alleviate some of that or at least share some of that if, if the participants are capable, I think is something that we should definitely look into. Um, I agree with everything you just said. I think it's, uh, it's all good stuff and uh, we, should, we should definitely take all that into account. Uh, we should also, I think, align um, the, the, I guess, like the... Um, expansion periods with the uh, re-prioritization, uh, whatever um, we end up doing. Like right now, we're, I think, targeting uh, three months, but uh, we'll see if that's the right uh, frequency. But it would also probably make sense to kind of try to um, have a, um, you know, like a uh, expansion period, whether it's every three months or every six months or every year. Uh, every year might be too long, but I would say three or six months would probably uh be just about right so whenever someone wants to come in they have to like they, they can they can join as an observer or whatever but essentially like they would fold into the existing structure uh you know like quarterly or uh, like uh, every six months that that's the time at which they would come in and we can also align uh contribution and payments uh with this as well so i think i think if we kind of build it as a uh, i guess like a, a holistic framework makes a lot of sense and uh, the governance will be much easier i would fully agree I think those make a lot of sense uh, a couple points that i would add um i think that uh so we have to determine ultimately at the decision point uh whether what the what the uh what the threshold is so for example um one way to go would be anyone who, who meets their technical requirements can join and we can't stop them, but they have to pay, they have to do eat, meet everything. Um, or we could use our standard, our standard form of, of uh, threshold voting threshold to decide. Uh, however, in many coalitions, you know, I often, often liken this to, to NATO. I often say it's NATO, not the EU. Right. But um, I think in either of those, every existing member has to, has to approve any additions. And so that might be not, not that we want to borrow too much, but those, you know, there's, there's reasons why those things evolve. So I think we need to think about that. And I would, I would, I would suggest that we don't do this more than twice a year. We don't have that period more than twice a year. And if we do have a period of twice a year, that there's a, that there should be a preliminary period, you know, the preliminary six, you know, you can come in and the, and the part of the process is you come in, you join as an observer for six months, see what you're getting into, you know, maybe take on some tasks, show us what, what kind of partner you'd be. Um, and then at the end of that period, then there, then there could be uh, some kind of vote if whatever, uh, whatever metrics uh, were, um, you know, had been met, you know, or it could be longer. Some year, some, some might take, a year to to meet whatever you know, as a provisional member to meet whatever um, requirements that we uh, set forward. Hopefully, quantifiable uh, ones, but some may may not be. Um, so, I would suggest that. All right. So, I think yeah, I was going to say I, I like the idea of a makes term. sense to me. I was I was going to suggest a year. I just wanted to point out by the end of this year, which would probably be like maybe the next window we could open it up for. We'll have been doing this for a year. So uh, just also wanted to point out 
in Eve's suggestion of, of an upfront entry cost, which we didn't have when the four of us established the coalition. Um, you know, maybe there should, I would, I would agree there should be an entry cost because everything we've done so far, we've all worked hard for what will end up being probably a year by the time anybody else joins. Um, so somebody coming in late um, and just gets to put their name on it without any anything in in the you know general public view that that they didn't actually do the year's worth of accomplishments that they're coming in late you know that an upfront fee could kind of offset all the work we've already done so um, I would agree with that and the other thing is I think I don't know exactly which ones you're talking about Eve but you know I, I I'm on the email yell for the one that went around this week um, you know and they're not trading publicly so there might need to be some criteria because a lot of our financial decisions are based on like the split is based on liquidity and trading price. Um, you know, I, I think UX, you know, you guys are in that same situation. You got in when we started and I think we're blessed to have you, but it's hard to establish a valuation when there's no trading price, right? So this one that expressed interest had, you know, they're not trading anywhere. So, you know, an arbitrary price doesn't really work for establishing uh, that split. So we might also need some criteria around um, that, that liquidity and price. Jesse, I, you clearly got the emails. I wanted to check with Guillaume and Lucas. Did you see the email threads from AMAX? And if you noticed, I did ask them, were they on a, a, de on a, a central exchange so we could kind of determine liquidity and market cap and stuff? Uh, it's set up when things come into info at Antelope. Lucas, you should be getting that email, and Guillaume, you should, and Jesse, clearly you did get it. And, and you could see I was replying to them, engaging them, and that's what got this onto the agenda. Um, one other, th I'll let you guys answer, Lucas or Guillaume, did you see that thread? I did not, so I'm not sure. Is, is there a header? That I should search for? If you just search for ted.khall at eosnetwork.com and see if there's an email from me, it says something about, uh, I'll give you the exact subject line. We are so interested in the antelope protocol is the subject line. But if you search for me, I'm replying yeah. from my Ted Khall account and engaging them. I want to make sure those emails are going to you, Lucas, and, and you want them. Do you want to see anything that goes into info at Antelope. Jesse gets them. I'm hoping. I do. I, I'm not getting them, and I would be also very interested. All right, let me fix that. That's my fault. I'll get that fixed, and I'll yeah, just. I'm, I'm not getting these, Ted. All right, let me fix it. Uh, Jesse, you got them, though, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the okay. one. And I appreciate you kind of engaging on that that price. That's exactly why I brought it up, because, you know, you're, you're asking more ad hoc, but it should, if we have a criteria, probably be a consideration in like an upfront, uh, you know, transparent. Just one, of the you things, one of the things I'd like to propose is that we would have an application and I'm happy to write a draft. I don't know why I want to make more work for myself, but what the hell. And I'm happy to write a draft application that a chain that wanted to join, because like we don't, we hardly know anything about these AMAX guys. So I could sit down and put a whole bunch of stuff together, kind of ad hoc. If you guys were into that, you know, then you could review, we could fill it out further. And then a new chain would at least have to fill all this stuff out before they'd even be open to consideration. What do people think of that? Is that a, a good idea or not so good? Yeah, at the very least, right? We, if we haven't heard of them, then, then we need some information about them. Um, the, that allows we, us to make more things quantifiable. I think that we don't want to, we don't want to make this too easy we don't want to make it easy in, easy out. It's it should it, things like thresholds, like uh, like votes and time put in ahead of time, uh, applications, um, proving some things to the group should be necessary so that the people who do it are you know demonstrating that they are willing to put some you know proof of work into it. Who would um, Eve wanted to do a working group? Um, I'm also happy to join it unless Eve feels, feels I'm redundant. Um, who from Telos would, would want to be on the working group? Don't all say yes at once. <laughs> I think we're capturing your ideas, though. So you can review if you don't want to be on the working group. How about uh, Guillaume? Do you, we lost Lucas, so we, we can ask. Uh, maybe, Jeff, you could ask Lucas offline. Yeah, I, was, I figured I would 
set this up offline anyway because we are a few minutes over unless oh, okay all right okay we yeah you can add me to the the group for now i'll uh, uh i'll determine at some point if we need to uh, find it to um uh offload it someone else but for the time being yeah i can i can do that fantastic the thank you contact. so i also need to get sorry to take one more minute i want to get back to that gentleman and let him know that hey we're, we're moving to like a quarterly or semi-annual review period. We likely won't be looking to admit new members until the end of the year. Some type of response like this. We'll be working out an application process. So, you know, we'll, we'll get back to you sometime in the December. Is everyone okay with the response like that? And I'll make sure I get you all on the thread before I reply to it. Or Yeah, maybe we should. I mean, I saw your email. You promised them, you know, some update after this meeting so uh yeah good on you for trying to deliver on that i think having a suggestion of watching our you know tell them we record our calls um you yeah. know it's not a public call but please please do you're welcome to review the calls that we have weekly and if you have any questions or or anything um if we give them an outlet for that back or thoughts on what they observe in these calls i think next week's will be a very very interesting call for anybody in that situation to see the prioritization discussion and things like that. So um, maybe we need, I don't know, Telegram or what, but maybe we need more of like a public forum where, you know, we have our core channel or maybe we already have a public channel. We do. So maybe we, we can send one. people somewhere that's like, here's the coalition channel. If you have questions or comments on anything that you may see in the videos of our, our coalition calls, please come here and engage. We're all there to discuss. And then we could potentially get a little bit more open uh, communication with folks like that. Fantastic. I'll, I'll add that as I, well in the reply. I would also, um, I mean, uh, maybe suggest that uh, when someone uh, shows interest, um, we at least invite them on one of these calls and give them like a five minute or something to uh, yeah. present their chain, present their project. And uh, just uh, just allow us to be uh, essentially introduced, and uh, doesn't doesn't change anything about the process uh, for acceptance. But at least if we uh, if we have a chance to uh, get to know them, it may influence the decision. Uh, would you all be okay if we let them let uh, the gentleman Ming Ping? I'm probably butchering his name. Um, no, that's his name, Ming Ping. It, would you all be okay if I let him come next week for five minutes? I like Fine the idea. Me. Yeah, right. I like the idea. I think next week we're going to be, our time's going to be kind of difficult with the prioritization voting, but. Let's do two weeks then. How about we do it a week from next week? Sounds good. Yeah, that's good. All right. That's good. Thank you. All right. Any last comments before we close today out? Good meeting.